On this episode of Utah ADV, we're going to talk about the insert. I know a lot of you have been wondering how this thing came about, and so that's what I'm going to tell you about right after this. Welcome back to Utah ADV. My name is Eric Young, and uh, today I'm going to go through and talk about the, the design and uh, acquisition of the components for this and the building of this uh, of this insert. I don't know what to call it. It's a drawer insert. It's a it's a kitchen. It's all kinds of things that's going on here. Um, and this is the this is the third one I built actually. The first one I built into a 98 Montero and the Nomad that you might be familiar with. The second one I did was actually a pre-built. It was a, a decked system that I put into the Silverado and, uh, and then this. And you know, those two things kind of combine into uh, the whole idea of what this would be. In addition though, really this is needs driven. After at least a decade of overlanding, uh, we've kind of kept track of all of the, uh, wouldn't it be nice if we had this, you know, kind of a thing. And so that's what's been behind the design and maybe the inspiration of what's been going on here. This is made out of extruded aluminum. And if you don't know what that is, it's this stuff. And it looks expensive. It's uh, it's used in a lot of retail uh, display, that kind of thing. That way, that's where I came across it years and years ago. Um, but it's uh, for sale. You can find it on Amazon. In fact, everything I've, everything you see here, except for the Domatech insert here, I've been able to go through and source on Amazon. This is made, uh, there are a number of companies out there that make this. There's one here in the U.S. called 8020. And I'm going to throw a lot of numbers around, so it's going to get a little confusing. But So 8020 makes this type of extruded aluminum, and the size of this aluminum, of the extrusion itself, um, is... There are numbers that go with that, like a 2020 or a 3030 or a 4040. This is 4040, meaning that it's about an inch and a half by an inch and a half here, and then it has the T channels all the way around as well, which really gives me the most um, flexibility that I needed to go through and build this insert. Okay, I, I've seen other builds done with 3030 or 2020, and they're on the wobbly side of things. I wanted something that would have a little bit more uh, structural integrity to it, and so that's why I decided to go with the heavier duty stuff. Um, it is aluminum, so it, it is lighter, okay? It's uh, lighter than working in particle boards, say, like what I did on the Nomad, um, and much lighter than the commercial stuff I got with the deck system, um, but still going to add some weight. But that being said, we've eliminated both the second and third row seats in the Tahoe for this to go in. So while we lost about 300 pounds, we gained maybe 150 pounds here in everything going in. So it's not bad. Two people can take this out, you know, uh, take it out, put it back in without much of a problem. The extruded aluminum is very easy to work with. You just need to have the right blade. So I'm using a crosscut saw to go through and make sure that everything is squared because that's pretty vitally important to putting this thing together. And then if I were cutting any angles, I'd have that ability to go through and, rep and reproduce those angles. No angles on this, this was all straight cuts, nothing to it. Um, the blade cost me, I think, 24 bucks to go through and shoot, uh, shoot to go through and cut aluminum. Um, but it was worth every penny because it made some really nice cuts with everything we did. The uh, footprint of this is four feet by four feet. So I ordered uh, these lengths in four foot lengths which cut down on an enormous amount of waste. I um, was able to use up pretty much everything. This is about all I have left after everything, all the cuts and everything that we've done on this here. I have a couple more pieces, a little smaller than this, but you get the idea. So it comes together by using these channels and how things connect inside these channels to go through and put it together, okay? And there's a, a number of different types of hardware out there that's used to go through and provide a stud inside of there or a bolt that you can put uh, 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 you can put a screw into and then connect everything together. So you can see how these are made where uh, for the corners. And then the finish is off nicely here. Um, you can see how the T-channels are cut to go through and put things in there. Uh, when I first started building this, the hardware that I found for it, I had to go through and pre-place, I had to pre-build everything with all the hardware to make sure that once I put it together, 
um, I would be able to go through and, and connect, say, the, the drawer slides to it or other uh, supports to put in there. And so you had to think quite far ahead in your build to make sure you had all of your nuts where they needed to be for all the, all the bolts to come in and, and put things together. And then after some um, research again on Amazon, I found this hardware, okay? And I'll get a close up of this here in a bit, but it's made, it's a, it's a T-bolt. I'll take that off so you can see what's in there. Can you get a close up of that? You can see how it's set up there so it'll rotate within the T-channel and then create a place for the bolt to go in. Now I'm gonna put this bolt in here to give you an idea of how it works, okay? So it slides into the channel and then when you start to tighten it up, it rotates around and then you have a way to go through and, and cinch down anything you need to, which is very handy. This comes in M4, M5, and M6 sizes. So the bolt sizes are uh, plenty um, stout to go through and give you the kind of uh, attachment uh, that you're looking for without any kind of shear, without anything going on that way. So if you decide to do something like this, I'd highly recommend these. I'll put a, uh, I'll put a description of these here in the video and a link down in the comments so you have an idea of how it comes together. So the main thing that led into the design of this, first off, was the fridge. We wanted to have a larger fridge than what we had in the Nomad. That was 20 quarts. We wanted to go through and maybe double that. So we're running an Iceco uh, JP40. It's a 40 quart, quart fridge. and the specs of the insert really are built to its um, its size, and you'll see that it's it barely goes through and uh, and fits inside there. There's not a whole lot of space wasted in that. It comes out far enough to where we're still able to access everything and open the lid up all the way, do everything that we need that way. So this dictated really the height of the insert, along with the fact that we wanted the insert to still come in below the window line. So we can open the window up and access stuff that way without having to open up the swing arm or the rear hatch. So it served two purposes or two different types of ideas we're driving then the height of this. This is on a, a proprietary fridge mount also made by Iceco. And that mount then is, is bolted into the extruded aluminum and become stressed members of this. So it's, it helps to go through and stabilize this. The design of this was uh, to obviously use as little as this as possible because of the expense involved and to find other members, other types of hardware that we could use in two different capacities, one to hold like the cooler and the second then to become something that would make the whole frame um, a lot more rigid. You can see there's, there is no move to this thing there as it's bolted in. Then we found other hardware to go through and, and kind of put everything together and make sure that it all uh, worked right and stayed together. One tip in assembling this is you don't want to tighten anything down until you're ready to tighten it all down for one last um, squaring off is what I call it. Um, keeping everything loose gives me a little bit of leeway to go through and, and put things together. And then once it was all done, uh, I took a square to every corner and I tightened everything down to that square to make sure that everything was gonna go through and, and operate uh, that way, part of my OCD coming out. So there's some components here. I talked about the ice co fridge freezer here, the JP40. This has been on since the day we plugged it in, uh, which has been about eight months ago. It's never been turned off. Uh, it runs off of the house battery that's inside the Rhino. It's kept a mean temperature of 30 degrees. It dropped down to 27 degrees here in the wintertime. Um, but outside of that, it's, been, it's, it, it's a fine uh, device. This insert here is made by Domatech. I bought this on a closeout because they were importing them from uh, France. Uh, and I don't know that they're still available. I, and I haven't looked to see if there are other types of inserts that are out there. It's a stamped stainless steel piece with two uh, burners on this made by Domatech. And the rheostats on these uh, are really nice. I can I can range heat uh, on both of them really nice, almost like at home on my gas range there. This has cold running water. Um, we don't have a, a, a heated system in this yet, uh, but that's really all I needed for here because we can heat water and put it on. This works off of a water pump on an on-demand water pump that draws water from the nine gallon tank that's underneath the dock deck in there. 
This closes down to make a nice work surface as well. For uh, We put a, a board over the top of this, a cutting board. And then I've used uh, this hardware, which I'm not all that really happy about, but for the time being, it works to go through and keep things uh, either extended out or in while we travel. Okay, what else can I tell you about? The top of this is uh, an indoor-outdoor carpet. And it's set up, the reason why I'm using that stuff is because it works really well with hook and loop. So you see, these are here, they're not going anywhere. And the reason why is because, go ahead and come on in here. I have hook and loop on them there that, con that connects them to the indoor outdoor. And that way, once they're down, they don't slide, they don't come off, they don't go anywhere, they're very secure. And there's other Velcro or hook and loop type stuff out there that, that you can use to go through and attach to that. The sides are done with the same surface material as these are. This wood is actually, um, this is leftover pieces from a hardwood floor that we put into our house. Um, it's a laminate, it's very durable. And I had to go through and screw them on because uh, the backs of these will not take any kind of glue, no matter what the glue is. But it seemed to work out really well. This, uh, this is the pantry. Here has three different levels to that, plus our, uh, our paper towel holder that way. And then this is our mess kit, basically, our pots and pans. Uh, this is a Stanley nesting pot and pan kit. There is a frying pan, a smaller pot, and a larger pasta pot, and then our uh, eating dishes on top of here by MSR. And most everything in here is an MSR product. I'm really sold on their quality and what they're able to go through and put it. I've used them for years and have never been disappointed by uh, by those products there. Uh, by the way, my daughter Addie is um, going through and doing the filming on this. <laughs> <laughs> so glad to have her along. <laughs> Excuse my occasional finger. <laughs> So the front door comes, uh, the door on the front of this or on the pasture side of this folds down and attached to that are recovery tools and survival tools that we have. And then also opens up a space inside there where we have a storage for all of our camping, uh, sleeping bags, our, our pads, our pillows, um, uh, things of that nature. Larger stuff like the tent is up on top in one of our uh, Rome Adventure Company uh, 90 liter uh, cases that's stowed up there. So the whole thing's pretty well self-contained. Uh, on the driver's side is the distribution panel for the 12 volt electronics that come from the house battery that powers the fridge and anything else there that we need to power. And then I've also wired in work lights here in the tail, in the door itself to go through and, and shine down and give us enough lighting here if we were working in the evening. So it works out well to go through and illuminate this work area. And then another one that goes and looks down inside the refrigerator. So I'm going to replace these, I think, with something that's a little more user-friendly and less ugly than what those are. Um, you might be wondering why I didn't use these. These are slam latches, actually, that have a little latch in them. But the way this is made on top, there just wasn't enough bite for them to go through and stick inside the frame. And if you have any questions on this, which I'm sure you probably do, I'd be happy to answer them. Uh, go ahead and just put them down in the comments. And uh, as you post, I'll go through and take a look and, uh, and get back to you with an answer. All right. On the next episode of Utah ADV, um, we'll probably get into the Rome Adventure Company 90 liter storage boxes that I have on top of this and how they're arranged to go through and help us with our recovery needs and then also store the stuff that we use for camping. All right. So until then, I uh, hope you have a, uh, a, a good holiday season, however you might be spending that. Uh, and um, I hope to see you out on the trail sometime. Okay, if you see us running around, flag us down. We'd like to say hi. All right, oh, last thing. Um, I'm not one to really do this, but we're getting so close to 500 subscribers. It'd be great to have you subscribe to this and to follow along the channel so you can be along for the ride. All right, okay, thanks for watching.